Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for a squat and deadlift day. Um, although at this point we might as well just call it lower body day. So I went ahead and started off with three sets of high bar squats. All right, this is pretty much my primary quad exercise. Although, interestingly enough, I do feel RDLs a lot in my quads. Uh, so again, we could debate as to how much of a quad exercise they are. Uh, and I think that's a fair debate to say, eh, maybe not because no length in position. But uh, three quality sets of squats, right? Try to take these nice and deep, good, uh, high quality Olympic style squats. These were, were fairly taxing for me. Um, again, people could say, well, you probably had a few reps in reserve. Maybe, maybe if I rest, pause them. And I think that's kind of a, a take home when it comes to fatigue on some of this stuff. Um, you know, people can say, well, you could have rest, pause more reps, but I'm trying not to. Once, once they start getting really heavy, that's it. So the last couple of these, I tried to pause, like maybe the last rep a little bit, uh, just to get that deeper burn. But uh, these, again, were quite taxing. Although I do feel like I need more and more core work to be able to support uh, the breathing and staying upright enough on even my high bar squats. So again, I'm doing added a little more core work today. I need to make sure my abs and everything are nice and strong. Um, I think it'll help with this. Uh, but, uh, you know, even though this is a pretty light weight, having done just this many total reps for me, uh, doing it uh, in the style, beltless, everything else, Again, it felt like a lot of work. I feel like the second set doesn't look as deep on camera as it should. It can be camera angle, uh, but I think near the end it got a little deeper. I'm just now seeing some of this some of this footage. I just clipped stuff a little bit. I haven't watched the squats. I was trying to get it down to about 10 minutes real quick, but I didn't look at any of the rep work yet. And there near the end we started getting deeper. But that also tells me a little bit about the fatigue. That means that these are challenging 10 rep sets. If in order to even get to my 10, you know, I'm, I'm skirting the first couple reps. Although, uh, I'm going to be a coach here. Jason, you need to get deeper on those early reps. Okay. <laughs> How's that? You've got to be mindful of these things. Especially, you know, if we're just going to come in to do three good sets, I do need to, to be very mindful of the rep quality and I think some of that I think that second set was me trying to rush through the first half of the set all right that is one of the only downsides to higher rep squats I think high rep squats bring a lot to the table I think they bring a tremendous amount to the table in terms of growth and everything else and just good training response however lifters and again myself included we just saw that on that second set we will almost try to rush through them just to get the set done, right? It's like ticking a box, I got the set done. No, we need to, we need to make sure we're getting good growth. Now my quads were, were definitely lit after that. So I decided today I'm just gonna mess with some RDLs, get some real high reps, did a couple sets um, instead of my deadlifts. And I'll probably eventually, I'll work some deadlifts back in soon, uh, some deficit pulls for reps. But I'm trying to do a little more reps. I had to think about that. I'm like, do I really wanna be doing 10 rep sets? On a conventional deadlift um, maybe I can bring a lot to the table but I also want to make sure my hamstrings and everything are getting plenty of work uh, now funny enough even the way I'm doing these you guys can tell we're getting a good hamstring stretch but I tend to feel even on the RDL um, I tend to feel more lat and more quad almost than I do hamstring and I think part of that's because my hamstrings are pretty strong uh, we've seen from some of the lifts I do. You guys have watched me deficit pull 600 plus at different points. Uh, my hamstrings tend to be real strong. When I've, from the back, people notice they're pretty well developed. So it's sometimes the case of I only feel them on certain exercises. You know, even exercises where they're a primary mover like a deadlift, I don't always feel a lot of hamstring. The only thing I really feel them on is the glute ham race. Glute ham raise is where I really, really feel the hamstrings. Uh, which is another reason I'm working it back in. And again, I want to reiterate, where we feel it isn't always everything. Okay, It can be a useful piece of data put into context, but it can it's not always an accurate representation of what's going on. Just be aware of that. You know, particularly if you have, have a particularly strong or well-developed muscle on certain exercises, you may not feel that muscle a lot mainly because it's just 
used to to large amounts of contraction and work. And I think my hamstrings fall into that case. So it's why today I really wanted to I want to work on really taking their volume up a bit and just getting more quality work because again they can always be bigger and stronger. Okay. Uh, the glute ham raises, these got fatiguing fast. I managed to get like 12 reps, and then I struggled to try to get 10 on the next two sets. All right, and on these, I'm kind of going back to the old way I used to do these uh, to where it is, it is less back. I'm not going all the way down to doing a big extension at the bottom. I'm trying to make the hamstrings just kind of do the work. And uh, again, uh, a point that could be made. This isn't putting as big of a stretch on them as some other stuff, but I still feel them a lot. Now, does that mean it's ideal? Uh, that's a good question. So I do, I do debate almost if, if on these I should go back and try to get that longer range of motion. Um, and just watching what's going on here, I, I think I need to try to work on doing that again. Because I wanted to use them with that old way I used to do them, because I, I still built a massive deadlift that way. All right? built a massive deadlift that way but um, again if I want maximum hypertrophy uh, I've got to think about that a little bit and say you know maybe maybe we need to uh, need to get that extra range of motion we're thinking about uh, again if I want to be consistent in my philosophy so um, I may work on that next time main thing is just getting used to doing these again after a few weeks and not doing them. Uh, and I think particularly when I'm doing two really hamstring intensive exercises, ease back into it. Because uh, my hamstring's got a lot of work today, especially those 12 rep sets with the RDLs. Um, so again, I want to make sure they're getting plenty of quality volume to go with the squatting. And really, ab work was a, was a major part of the day also. Um, again, I feel like I need more core strength, more ab strength um, for those Olympic squats. I think it would be a good idea. Plus, as I continue to get leaner, lose body fat, uh, having a little more abdominal development won't be a bad thing. Um, you know, people say the silly thing. They're always like, well, abs are made in the kitchen. Well, that's not true. No, abs are st it's still a muscle, guys. It's still hypertrophies. It can still get deeper. It's just that until you get lean enough, you can't really see it, right? I mean, obviously. You gotta have some common sense with this stuff. You gotta have a little common sense. I mean, again, just look at it from a common sense perspective. Once you are leaner, they will be deeper if they're more developed. Again, context. And if they're more developed, they'll give me better support on things like my squatting. Okay? They'll give me better support. You guys see my face right there. You can tell that that was a hard set. Yeah, I couldn't really go on. That was that was difficult. Um, again, getting that quality hamstring work in. All right, and then of course I'm doing my hanging leg raises with uh, just hanging on now, which I think is good. This is good for my my shoulder mobility, good for my grip. This this ends up making every day a true grip day, even if I strap up for the RDLs. I still got to hang on these, and then I do all that pull length on the other day do all that pulling on the other day but um, so I did all this since I did those two the RDLs and the glute ham raises I didn't feel the need to do the reverse hypers because honestly my low back is crazy strong at this point it really is it, it's not going to be a weak link for me anytime soon uh, so again finished up with a really high rep set of band press downs I did not count reps on these I have no idea how many I did. I just did it till it burned after doing the other app work. So I just went over immediately through that after the last set, through that strap over, grabbed it. So, you know, had like 20, 30 seconds and just walked right into these just to finish these abs off. Um, just abs, hip extensors, everything. Uh, so again, I think people also have to remember the abs have a fairly short range of motion or the abdominal, because it's not multiple abs, it's one muscle. Um, but again, you know, the same concept, working it from a couple different angles, uh, not a bad idea, right? We did the harder work, and then we came in and just did a really, really high rep set on a different exercise like this, uh, just, just to get a little more complete development. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.